Hi, this is John Sawash, and I want to spend just a couple minutes sharing how I create and set up my online courses. Um, I've been working on online courses for, gee, probably five, ten years. I've been creating, teaching, exploring them. I'll be very honest, online courses have never been my favorite. I find them very difficult to create, um, especially to create an engaging class. Um, but I really feel that in the last two years, I've finally figured out a format that works really well for me. And I just kind of want to outline kind of that setup uh, process with you here. Um, Right now, I'm getting ready for uh, a new course. We're getting ready for this Classroom Kickstart course, which uh, starts at the end of July 2018. And so uh, I'm kind of halfway through the process. So I wanted to take a minute and share um, how I got here. Um, it all begins with an idea. So I listen very carefully to the questions that teachers are asking me. Um, at conferences, via email, on Twitter, and I try to identify a topic that's of great need and interest, and uh, Google Classroom certainly um, has that interest, and so I decided to create a course on it. Uh, to begin, what I do is I, I just create a Google Doc and uh, start sketching out a very basic outline of the course. Um, my courses are all five weeks long. I find that's a good format, good length. Um, a month, four weeks is not quite enough time to get into it. I feel that six weeks is um, a little bit more of a commitment than a lot of people want to make. So I've landed on five weeks. I'm sure there are other great you know, durations as well. It's not a scientific uh, answer. It's just uh, what works well for me. Um, so, you know, the first thing I want to do is I really need a good hook. And so um, I start by writing a two to three sentence description that tries to really capture the challenges, the struggles, the um, difficulties that in this case, the teacher is facing um, in the classroom. And then um, I try to share the solution or um, several solutions to those problems. And so I'll go ahead and create an outline. Um, kind of a week zero is kind of the introduction to the course. I'll create a lot of content that I'll post for free for people to read and kind of look through. It's the same format of the course. They don't have to pay to get this uh, stuff. So that's kind of week zero. Um, and then for each week, I try to come up with a catchy title, a brief description, and then the learning topics for that week. Um, each week has a very specific goal in mind. So at the end of this week, after going through the, the modules, the units, um, what are you going to be able to do? And so that repeats itself for weeks two, three, four, and five. Um, it'll take me probably anywhere from one to three weeks to really get this where I'm comfortable. Um, once I've got all of this um, done, I'm copy edited and ready to go, then I will create my um, course landing page um, with images and things. This is what I actually use to promote the course. Um, it takes me anywhere from six to uh, 12 weeks to create these courses, and so they're not free. Um, I have to, to have some um, you know, financial... Um, gain for my time. And so my courses are $99 for the five weeks and all the content. And so this is the uh, the sales page that outlines the course, the cost, the uh, duration, all the details. And so that's what you're seeing on here, all the different elements. Here's the course outline uh, that I just reviewed. So it goes from a Google Doc into uh, this tool here. I use lead pages. There's lots of good options out there. Um, now, as soon as I make this page live, I do go in, I use Google Classroom to teach these courses. I do go into Google Classroom and set up the course um, so that when people register, they get immediate access to the course regardless of when they, um, when they sign up. And so they'll just go in and they'll just see some basic stuff, an introduction, um, a little welcome message, you know, uh, continuing edu education credit info. Um, so I just posted in the course. And so I've got about 35, 40 people signed up right now. Not everyone has actually joined the course yet, which is fine. Um, I'll send them a reminder um, when the course starts in a few weeks. So that's ready to go. Um, now I will go ahead and structure and start setting up the course, just the basics of it. Um, you can kind of see I've got my course shell in here. I still have to post the actual assignments in, uh, which I'll be doing um, next week. So that's kind of step one. I'll do that. Usually my goal is um, 
one to two, well, two to three months before the actual start of the course, I want to have that course landing page up so that people have time to register for the course. Once that's ready to go, then I will begin um, creating the actual lessons for the course. And um, my outline is super helpful for that. So I just pull up this outline and leave that open. And then I have this, uh, this is the template that I've designed for my courses. It's essentially a kind of modified or customized hyperdoc. Um, I found that rather than posting, you know, five, six assignments in Google Classroom, I just post this document, which has all of the different topics for the week. And so I use my outline as the example. I just finished uh, the last one. Uh, so this is week five. And all I'm doing is basically copying this text and pasting it into the document. And then these bullet points in the outline are the lessons for that week or the different modules within the uh, the week. Um, so we had a brief intro, some basics. I uh, clearly define the goal for the week. And then I have a series of activities or modules. So this one has five. And so uh, for this particular week, we're looking at different classroom ideas for Google Classroom. Um, so each week there is a video that uh, the participants will watch and then a list of additional resources templates blog posts videos uh, that they can access if they wish so i like to create these lesson documents first i work through all of my text put all of my um, resources in there that way when i need go back to create the video i just open up this document i look at this summary and i know exactly what i need to say for that particular video and then i just link the video um, right here so i'm on kind of step uh, two of three i've done the outline i just finished all of the course documents the last step that i need to do is um, actually create the videos and put them into the documents. Uh, I guess a fourth step would be then putting all of that content into Google Classroom. Um, this will be the fourth class that I've taught using this format. Um, it's worked very well for me so far. The feedback has been good. Um, I've learned that when you're doing professional development in Google Classroom with teachers, you want to post fewer assignments. Better to have a longer assignment like this, but only one, than to post, you know, each of these individual things um, in classroom. It just gets a little overwhelming. Um, and teachers go through the content differently. Some of them will peck away at it. They'll spend 10, 15 minutes a day over the course of the week, whereas other teachers will just wait till Friday and then spend, you know, an hour going through all of it. And so I've, I've tried dripping the content out, you know, posting a different assignment each day, but that frustrated people because if they, you know, Tuesday was their day to do stuff and I only put out, you know, two of the five lessons for the week, then they were kind of frustrated with that. So I try to put as much of it out, let them deal with it, whenever it's convenient uh, for them. Um, so that's my process. Hopefully that's um, helpful, inspiring, um, show you something that uh, maybe you haven't considered before. Uh, if you are interested in checking out any of my courses, you can visit uh, my website, uh, chrmbook.com slash courses. Uh, it's chromebook.com slash courses, and uh, you'll see all the courses and when they're available.